So I know it's been a while since I did a uh, MASH podcast. Uh, the previous one we were talking about when Jesus Christ came to MASH with the uh, uh, shell shock soldier who believed it was Jesus Christ. But this episode really stands out for me because I think this season three episode pretty well cemented MASH is not only one of the most popular uh, comedies of its time, but uh, showed how different writing teams were bringing a lot to the episodes. Of course, we're going to talk about the five-star episode called Springtime. Now, Springtime was written by Linda Bloodworth and Mary Kay Place, two most recognized female comedy writers of the uh, 1970s, and it was directed by Don Weiss. Now, there's three or four plots going on at the same time. They're all pretty well interconnected. It's springtime at the 4077, and, uh, you know, with springtime, love is in the air. Klinger is trying to, to marry his girl back home. Uh, Radar is looking for love, while Hawkeye is getting bromanced by a soldier. He's saved on the operating table, and he's basically saying... You know, I want us to be friends for life. I'm going to protect you for life. Now, there's a, there's a lot happening in the episode. And try to watch the unedited syndicated version or the DVD version. So, there's an A story, a B story, a C story, and a D story. The A story, to me, is the machinations for Klinger getting married. This is what occurs. Klinger is laying down in the middle of a glade underneath a big tree reading a poetry book that he won in in, in, a, in a, a gambling event uh radar comes over says this letter you know looks pretty important so his his fiance at home has accepted his uh, appeal for marriage he decides to basically in full gone with the wind regalia to jump down into the valley and is celebrating ha 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 one of the most dramatic comedy scenes of all time, ladies and gentlemen. This scene was so funny, my family who was watching the episode couldn't stop laughing for five days. Can you imagine? Jamie Fire with his big nose, dressed up as Scarlett O'Hara, running down into a glade and making a bird sound. Ha ha! Ha ha! I mean, you know, how often do you see that? Anyway, the poetry book that Radar gets from Klinger. He uses that to impress a woman played by the writer Mary Kay Place. He's trying to impress. But it works too good and she eventually jumps him, but that ties into the end of the episode again too in a second. Now, like I said, Hawkeye is being overprotected by this uh, character who is actually Alex Karras from Mongo fame from Blazing Saddles. And this came out the same year as the Blazing Saddles. So he's playing a literate version of Mongo. What happened, he encounters, uh, Hawkeye encounters a PTSD soldier who is holding a cat. He doesn't want to give up the cat because he feels that's his only connection to reality. When he uh, gives up the cat, he puts Hawkeye in a headlock. And then the Alex Karras character comes over and puts it all together. Now as the, the episode goes on, uh, uh, Hot Lips and Major Burns don't want the wedding to go ahead. Because Klinger wants to be get, get married by uh, what he called radio connection, dressed up in kind of a, a Catholic's female uh, uh, christening uh, dress. Beautiful dress, by the way. Most Catholic weddings back in the 50s didn't have a dress that nice. So here we have Klinger dressed up in a wedding dress. Father Marquis is trying to connect for the uh, what he called the long distance wedding service. Hawkeye shows up uh, and. Uh, uh, and basically they're all uh, they're all dressed up. Trapper John is dressed what looks like a comedy hat. Then Burns and, and, and Hot Lips shows up and basically saying we're against this wedding. And then Radar shows up after the wedding is consummated. And he's basically been raped or close to being raped by this female he was chasing. So, so like I said, there's a lot going on. Now, now Radar's storyline... According to some published reports, is reminiscent of the infamous love story episode from season one, but this ends on a happier note. We don't know if Radar has been deflowered, or in this case, the chocolate, because he brought, a, brought her chocolate. So he's bringing her chocolate and reading her poetry, and she gives in. He said, you can see right through me. 
and all hell breaks loose. Now, uh, the 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 uh, the marriage ceremony was very very interesting because I don't think anybody got married on U.S. comedy dressed in a wedding dress if there was a man. I think it's the first time. Now, uh, a lot of people believe this is probably one of the stronger episodes of season three. I tend to agree because it has a feminist perspective because it's written from a female perspective and all the major plots, all four, shows that love can overcome all. In Radar's case, he got overcome. Uh, Hawkeye basically doesn't want the affection from the Alex Garrett's character, but a lot of ways he does because sometimes he feels he's not really appreciated. In the first episodes, he's, the first of the episode, he's talking about the fact he's, you know, he's back is sore and he feels, you know, uh, let down. But in in uh, in the in any type of mass unit, there's going to be connections with a soldier being saved by the doctor, and there's like a lifelong a lifelong connection. But the Alex character, Kara's character, plays kind of himself, you know, former uh, pro NFL player, but he plays Mongo in the same way, but Mongo of Mongo could really speak coherent sentences. Anyway, now uh, now this was the second of three episodes penned by the partners Bloodworth and Mary Kay Place, who later went on to uh, pen uh, various uh, comedic shows. And this Mary Kay Place wasn't a full actress at the time. I think this was a third or fourth role. Now, uh, overall, like I said, if you can get the unedited version, I give this four and a half, uh, four and a half stars out of five. The only uh, half star I'm not giving it because I like to see a better conclusion with the PTS soldier who was holding on to the cat because, uh, to my knowledge, he didn't speak a line. I would like to see the fact he would uh, have a connection with Hawkeye in relation to how he tried to help him because a lot of cases, Sidney Friedman wasn't a full character at the time and Sidney would be probably have a throwaway, wi- throwaway line saying, you know, Sidney should be called in for, for him. Because Sidney Freeman was a kind of a, an unwritten rule in the MASH episodes when somebody was up against uh, psychological uh, situations. They had that connection with Sidney and Sidney could be brought in. And you know uh, Sidney's connection with the finale and that ties in actually to all the, the PTSD cases that were uh, they're prevalent in the show, including Hawkeye's one where he took the nervous breakdown. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening. I'm going to try to do these on a more regular ba- basis. The reason why I'm doing this because TLN in Canada, the Latino network, don't know why MASH is considered a Latino-themed uh, uh, comedy. It's shown in English. Uh, there, it's probably one... Season 3 had a lot, of lot of positives, and especially in Canada, the ratings were true to the roof. 50% of the Canadians were watching MASH on a weekly basis either in first runner syndication. And that's a lot of that's a lot of MASH fans. So, ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. Bye.